the least we can do, even if you won't give an offering, even if you won't give an offering, the least you can do is get that phone that God blessed you with and copy the link every service day. We should stop doing this every time. We should do this for guests. Members of the church should be so sensitive to say, I can't sit here while the world perishes. How do you claim faith in what you want to hear when you don't want others to hear? How is the faith true? So let's be careful that we don't have what I call a false zeal for the Lord. How do we even feel if we claim that we want to reach the world? How will we reach the world? The tendency is that as we gather here like this and we walk out from here, most of you don't share because you're already in church. But it's even wrong because personally to me, if I enter anywhere and something is good, I can't rest on to have shared it. How do you walk out from church? The first thing you are sharing is the food you ate in the restaurant yesterday. How, how, how is that a way to tell God that I was so blessed by you? Your first status is the restaurant yesterday. I mean, you guys have to visit that restaurant. It's so nice. I was out there with my child, with my husband, with my parents and whatever. That's your first message from church. We lie that the word of God is good to us. I think that let me rebuke you all on this. This spirit is a bad spirit. Bad spirit. I would really appreciate if we change. I would really appreciate it. Don't give me an offering if you care. Don't give me a special seat. Okay, don't thank God for my life. Spread his word. Now, how difficult is that for anyone amongst us here? If you cannot share the link without meeting somebody one-on-one, -on -one, you will come for evangelism. You can, you can confront people. You won't be able to confront people. At least start from the small level. Even if you are afraid of confronting people, you are afraid of your status. Of your own status. Or you are just simply ashamed of the gospel. That's a very likely option. That's a very likely option. You're hiding to come to church. Just come. It's church now. Just come and sit there inside you. After Sunday, you go. They don't know where you went to because they cannot tell from your status. The world is ours to take over. Know that. Currently, we're having different kinds of crises. It keeps happening in the nation. If it's not economic, it may be political. If it's not political, it may be health. If it's not health, it is just something. It keeps going in a circle. That's it. We're coming from COVID. We're entering economic. After economy, what's coming? And it's sometimes as Christians, we seem to alarm the thing when we're in the heat of crisis we start gathering and praying as if we really mean people to be saved we are just being selfish when we do that you see if i said covid is coming in two weeks you know what covid was to you all of you claim to be busy who claim as if you don't have time for social so, so thing you will leave that thing because you hate what happened to you during covid and all the prayers we prayed for covid praying that our government will not be loose to embrace all this madness that we're bringing god kept this nation God really kept this nation. Our government did not make some kind of radical decision that we saw other nations making. And away from that, God really protected the borders of Africa. Amen. Despite all the prophets that bodies to be littered on the street, it was instantly littered on their own street. But we had nowhere in Africa where bodies were littered on the street, as they said. Because we stood up at that time to pray. But it has passed and people have the tendency, after they've gone through something, they go back to their vomit. But you see, I'm just letting you know that there are many that if they come across our messages, they will be blessed. What excuse do we give before God at the end? What would this generation say? We don't go for evangelism anymore. We don't do. People are... Because the paradigm has changed. The world has changed. You hit somebody's dog, maybe get a dog on you. It's different. It's even more delicate to go out hitting dogs to preach. And very likely it's ineffective. In this day, in those days it was possible, no internet. But in these days... God has so much provided knowledge. Even knowledge that has brought forth technology just for the sake of the gospel because this gospel must be preached to the ends of the earth. Then the end shall come. How would, it, how would that have been possible without the internet? But now people in villages that don't have roads have internet. It's not for our personal pleasure. It's not just for your career. It's not for your entertainment. Behind all of these inventions that the Spirit of God has allowed even if it came to an unbeliever, is so that the gospel may be preached to the ends of the earth, then the end should come. And when we have these phones, mega data, some of you have, we work with companies that they give you free data. Is it difficult for us to just get a link of a service that blessed you and share on your status willingly without anybody telling you? 
Jesus met this woman, by the way. I always tell most Christians, if they always have to tell you to preach the gospel, you have not believed. And start by being true to yourself. Because if you have believed, what is the gospel? You know what it did to your soul? You know what kingdom it has brought you into? Are you experiencing righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost? What does that mean to you that you are withholding it from others? It's a sign of unbelief. When Jesus met this man by the well, he didn't tell her to go preach. He didn't. As he was talking to her, he says, Sir, wait. Let me go into the city. I'm coming. He said she left her water pot. She left her profession. She left the reason why she came. She left the pursuit of things that don't satisfy to go invite people to the living waters. She left her pot. Why is her pot so busy for with us? Why? Why have the pot we carry become so occupying that living waters is becoming less interesting to us? Why do we talk about our businesses all the time? I'm not saying fill your whole status with the message once a day, on a Sunday, on a Wednesday. How difficult is that? Okay, use the other days to talk about your business, your career, your family, everything. Use one day or two days just to say, I'm watching service, join me. You'll be blessed. What is the kind of heart you have? What Your conscience doesn't talk to you. Some of us have come a long way, 20 years in the faith. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not new. I got saved 2003. It is 20 years, 21 now, in the faith. 10 years as a pastor. When I talk to you this way, please listen. Listen. And believe. We've kept the zeal for the Lord for many years. We've kept it. It's a sign of loyalty. A sign we know what we are pursuing. I preached the gospel in high school. I preached when I was an employee. Ask my colleagues, they will tell you. I preached when I was out of this country. I've been on the social media platform for more than 15 years. I've been there. And ask all those who know me, go and scroll my page, the former page, because I had left the thing and I'm just in the private section now. My former page that you scroll down 10 years ago, you see me talking about Jesus 10 years ago. Then I was not a pastor. I mean, long time ago, 5K pastor. I was talking about the gospel, talking about the gospel, talking about the gospel. I'm sharing this with you all to understand that there is something like zeal for the Lord. It's what makes you enter the temple and draw out a whip and say the house of the Lord will not be used like this. Because your heart is after what matters to God. And let's be careful that in the guise of trying to do things for God who have not become like matters, who are so busy with the secondary things in the name of doing it for God, and the main thing we should be doing, we are not doing it. Despite all the privileges we are surrounded with. And Jesus said, on that day, Sodom and Gomorrah will rise up and condemn this generation. Because if the things done in your day was done in their day, they would have had the occasion to repent. If you really think that all of us will be judged the same, you lie. We'll be judged based on opportunities we had. You came from a better family. What did you do? You was born into wealth. Some people have gone through poverty, abject poverty. You think you'll be judged the same? Forget it. Forget it. To whom much is given, much is expected and the judgments are different. During the three days of glory, there was one young lady who got here and as I was ministering here, the Spirit of the Lord showed me to her. I called her here and as I was praying for her, I told you that she had been molested. She'd been abused. I told you that here. And I asked my boss to find out. And she finds out and comes back and gives me a report that is very disheartening. Of the abuse she has gone through. These are people dying in the world. And she came here on her own. Nobody invited her. Small girl like this of how many years? How old is she? 13 years old. Just dancing around the place, finding the place, then got in here. And the Lord could find her out in the course of the, the session. People are perishing. How are we claiming that we want to see people saved? But we cannot share the gospel. Okay, you don't even talk. Share the link. I don't want talking. I'm preaching. Share. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of people that published it. So when Christ healed 10, one came back. What ratio is that? What was wrong with the heads of the other nine? Did you get healed? Are you not blessed in this church? What are you going to? They ran back into their affairs. God shows up in your life and blesses you and you still get so busy to go back and say, Lord, I'm grateful. How do I serve you? 
one of you sent a message to me recently during the 10th anniversary, and I was so blessed by that and said, while he was praying, the Lord said to him, as you give your boat, also stay there. And that touched me. As you give your boat to Jesus, stay there. Because some of you give your boat and go away. That was the voice of God I told him. I said, that, I said what you just heard is the Lord talking to you. That as you give your boat to my service, stay there. Because beyond your boat, I want you. I want to use you. And there's some of you here who just feel like because you have some other means, money or other things, you can just give money and go and live the life. You're using your money to bribe God not to call you. You know, so you say, no, don't worry, Lord, 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 I will sponsor, I will give, I will do anything you want. But for me, allow me to just do what I want. So no matter what you give to the Lord, be there. Because you are the greatest gift you can give the Lord. It's yourself, not what you give. Some of us are here, I should tell you this because we have laid down our lives. I say it before the Lord. We are only here because we have laid down our lives. We have other things we should have been doing as well. Think about it. Every single day, the souls you cannot reach, your status will reach. Your status will reach. The only thing that I've been praying God to give us is zealous people who beyond just being zealous in coming to church are also zealous in standing for the Lord. Because should fire show up again in this nation or across the world, that's when you understand that the person who is killing you is the one that for five years you failed to preach to the person. The person who is passing knife into your stomach, you hold a knife like this and you say, brother, is it you who is stabbing me like this? And he looks at you and says, yes, it is me. And then you remember, if I had preached to him in the past three months, he wouldn't have done this. Because his heart would have changed. And that's what the gospel does. It changes people's heart. Look at your heart. The evil things going on in the world now, can you do them? You can't. You can't because your heart has been changed. But understand that people can do that and they are the ones that can still destroy you if you let that keep to stay like that. One thing I will ask of all of you is to promote the work of the Lord. That's all. If you do that, I will be pleased. The Lord will be pleased and we all will be blessed. So while we have this slot every service day, as the Lord has asked me to do, because some people may still forget even after I've spoken like this, some may not have heard, this will not go far until they hear it like this, then the slot will stay in the program. Hello everybody, you're welcome to church. God bless you. We have the reach out slot in this program. And it's important for us to get across to those who are not watching us right now. Some people are in a difficult situation somewhere, unreachable parts. Somebody in some deep village somewhere, but it's on Facebook. The person is a step away to this message. Let's get out our phones and reach out to people in the love of Christ. And we all do that. We do that, everybody. Then, okay, guys, let's come back to service. Put off your phones, airplane mode. Let's now focus on the Lord, knowing very well we have witnessed to others and we have created an opportunity for them to receive what we are receiving here. How will your conscience feel like? And away from that, you have sown a very great seed. For he that waters shall himself be watered. And your feet have been made beautiful upon the mountain at least for that day and that hour. I'm asking myself, how hard is this? Not at all. Praise God. Men of God are dying. People are dying. This work is tough. Sometimes we do some things to the detriment of our own lives. We go the extra mile sometimes. Even the extra mile that God says don't go, we just find ourselves going. And we die. It happens. Moses would have died. Moses, who was meek, would have died unless someone came and said to him, Moses, the thing that you're doing is not right. Please adjust like this. Then you will live long and the people God has given you.